All right, welcome everyone. Thank you again for attending another session of RM Smart Investing. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about a topic, which is actually, it's a simple idea. It's a simple technical indicator. Uh, uh, it's called the uh, moving average envelopes. But I think it's a nice compliment if you're using Bollinger Bands or Keltner Channels, or you use the squeeze indicator. And I think you will find this as a nice compliment and could add to your profitability. So uh, with that in mind, uh, basically what I'm gonna try to accomplish today is uh, discuss what is that moving average envelopes. And then we compare it with Bollinger Bands and Keltner Channels. And then we wanna see what kind of uh, length of the moving averages we should use and what type of moving averages are the, uh, the most appropriate. And then as far as the envelopes goes, what is the, the, the width or the percentage of that we should use? And after that, then we're gonna put things together and say, how can we profit with this moving average envelopes? And then, um, then we will compare the, uh, the advantage for traders, what they should use and what the investors should use. And at the end, I'm gonna put all together through the charts. And the last but not least, we will look at my seven criteria or my seven rules to bring everything again in line and uh, basically summarize everything. So with that in mind, again, so what is this moving average envelopes? Now, the moving average envelopes are basically a percentage-based envelopes which are set above the, your chosen moving average. So if you choose a 20 period moving average or an eight or 50, basically this just goes above and below that. And basically it's, uh, it's plotted uh, a certain percentage. Now, these uh, envelopes are also called trading bands. They're also called moving average bands. They're called price envelopes, percentage envelopes. They're all the same. And the whole concept about the bands or the channels or the envelopes is that based on these ideas, the majority of the price action is contained within the, these bands or the envelopes or the channels. So that's the whole idea is that really the, it talks about the probability. And basically that's what we are taking advantage of when we use this type of, again, we talk about envelopes and bands. Now, what does that mean that you put it in the formula? It's a very simple formula. And what that is, is basically we choose the center band, which is your chosen moving average, and we add uh, a percentage to it. So for instance, if there is like, you wanna see the movement within two and a half percent of your moving average, so it will be, two and a half percent plus one times your moving average. If it's, let's say you choose a 20 simple moving average and you want to be within 5%, you just multiply, let's say your moving average is at 100, you multiply one plus 0.05, which will be 105, or minus 0.05, which is a 95 percentile, and then that will be 95. So you're going to be at 100, 105, and 95. So Based on that, you can see it's really, they're all parallel. Now, when we talk about that, we just notice they're parallel. And this is the difference between the Bollinger Bands, the Keltner Channels, and the Moving Average Envelope. So, uh, so you've been familiar with Bollinger Bands. The Bollinger Bands are very dynamic. And what I mean by that, they get adjusted automatically to the volatility. And because of that, it, what happens, you see the bands, the widths can change, they can narrow, they can expand. The same thing with Keltner channels, they are dynamic, so they adjust quickly to the volatility. Now, the moving average envelope, on the other hand, because they're just using a percentage above and below the moving average, basically, as I mentioned, they're pretty parallel static, and that's why uh, they do not adjust to the volatility. Which, can become important, but also it could be a benefit as we, we shall see. Now, the Bollinger Bands are obviously they use the standard deviations and that's the reason when there's a low volatility, you see the bands are narrowing and there's a high volatility, the bands open up. The same thing with Keltner channels, which they use the average true range. And because of that, again, the, because the prices are changing, 
the width can change because of the volatility of those prices, the movement on a daily basis. So they're based on ATR. So now that we know the differences and we, we think, you know, the simplicity of the moving average envelopes is, is, is great. And that helps us to actually plot them a lot easier too. So what happens is you have to decide what moving average do you want to use? Do you want to use a short term moving average, maybe eight period? Do you want to use a 20 or 21 or 18? How about a little longer term as an investor? Maybe you want to look at 100 day or 50 day or 200. So you can use it based on your preferences. So if you're a long term investor, really you are not interested in using short term moving averages, let's say eight or 20. If you're more of a short term or intermediate, you're a swing trader, perhaps a 20 day might be, or 21 day or period moving average would be more attractive. And then if you're really short term, then eight or even three can be attractive. So there's one, and then the type will be, do you use the, the, the simple moving average, which looks at all the data in an equal way and they're weighted equally, or would you put more weight on more recent prices and that would be the exponential moving average. So it puts more weight in the, again, the last day's price or the two days ago's price rather than let's say 20 days ago. So basically that's a decision you have to make and we will discuss it more where it's more appropriate to use this. Now, as far as the width of the channel, as we mentioned, you have the central, which is your moving average, let's say it's a simple moving average. Then you have to decide how wide you, your, your envelope should be. You wanna be 1% above your moving average, which makes it kind of narrow. You wanna make it two and a half. You wanna go five, which is wider. You wanna go 10%. So this is all the choices you have to do. And the way we will, again, once we put all together, you shall see that depending on the underlying security and also the type of investor or trader you are, that's what you will choose. You will choose whether you want to have a narrow width or you want to have a wider width. So speaking of that, let's say if you are more of a trader and a short term, let's say the short term time frame investor, in the sense where you become a trader, then at that time you want to use a shorter moving averages, perhaps let's say eight uh, period moving average. And because you're more proactive, then you want to really use the eight exponential moving average, which is weeks more uh, value on the most recent prices. And you could also use the 20 exponential moving average if you are more of an intermediate or again, you, you even like using options, for instance, if using option strategy for three weeks from now, using monthly option strategy, that would be attractive. I think 20 or 21 will be a good um, underlying as far as the moving averages go. If you're an investor, then you're looking at a little more longer term, obviously. So at that time, you could use a 20 simple moving average. So the volatility also plays a role, but it's not as much as if you're a short term tra uh, um, and a trader. And because, again, you're looking long term, then you are allowed to maybe look at some narrower uh, width rather than when you're a trader, you wanna really, because of the day-to-day, -day, there's more volatility, you wanna increase your, your width because otherwise you will have a lot of whips up. With the longer term, you, you can afford to look at more of a, as an investor, have your width larger and wider. And again, you can use a 20, uh, you will use a simple moving average, uh, because you're looking at the longer term, you can use a 50 simple moving average, you can use a 200, so 100, 65. If you desire, you can use 34. So basically, that's a choice of uh, you know what you'd like to choose. So based on that, how to really profit from these um, envelopes? So how do we look at these envelopes and say, you know, this is that we can take advantage of the movement and the prices based on these envelopes. So this, in my opinion, there's the three main ways you can actually take advantage of these moving average envelopes. Number one, you can see if there's a strong trend and there's a trending movement and you will find that trending 
number one, by just looking at the choice of your moving average, let's say it's a two, uh, 20 period, 20 day moving average, and you see there's a nice slope, that tells you, let's say it's a, um, a, a trending slope. So because there's an angle, then this would be there's a trend. And we will talk about more ways um, also finding out how the trend uh, can be uh, recognized. And then if they have a strong trend and they break above actually top of the um, envelope, that actually shows strength. And because this is trending, this will continue and that will be one way of when it breaks above your upper, um, for instance, band, then you will actually, it will be confirmation to go positive and go long. On the other hand, if it breaks below the, in the trending market, goes below your um, uh, uh, envelope uh, band, then that will be telling us that you are in a, um, in a downtrend and maybe you can go short or use a, a bearish uh, option strategy. There are also times that a lot of times in markets are range bound, your underlying prices. So basically at that time, when we have uh, one of the ways to recognize, maybe you have a flat moving average or close to being flat. Now, these are very good times to take advantage of these range bound um, um, envelopes. And at this time, usually the upper uh, band of your envelope uh, becomes your resistance and the lower part, or the lower band becomes your support. And they become predictable as long as you're, you know, within that your band, when it hits the upper band, usually that's support and more of a reversal. And when it hits the lower band, it tells you that it's either to uh, go out of your positions or maybe take a new position. The third part will be, we talked about the breakout and continuation now. What happens when you're really overextended and we are so far away from these bands, then that might rec you can recognize as a reversal. And at that time, you're really overextended. And at that time, we call it maybe slingshot, like a sling. And uh, uh, what will happen is it's like what we, all we call a rubber band. We are just so far out of that that we will have a, a quick reversal. So that would be another way of using these, uh, these uh, uh, moving average envelopes or bands. So looking at that, let's now that we've got a little basis and foundation about this, let's see how we can recognize on using charts. So I didn't go to the charts first. I just want to give you some, again, foundation, especially a lot of you have been trading to see uh, what the foundation is. And now we take a look at some examples. For instance, well, let's look at the, the, the ETF of uh, S&P 500, which is the spider, so the SPY. And you can see on top right here, it says the moving average envelope. And what we're using, we're using the 20 simple moving average. And the reason I'm using simple moving average is I'm looking at this as an investor. I'm using an index like a spider. So I'm pretty comfortable and I'm more of an intermediate, maybe investor in the sense that as far as time frame, I'm not doing short-term trading, but I'm not gonna hold this for years. So I'm looking at something as a swing trader perhaps, or something in more of a, uh, a couple of months. So I'm looking at this and this, you can see the next part, it says that it is five and five. And what that means is I'm using a five percentage envelope. So this is, it's a 20 day moving average. So my yellow is my 20 period or 20 day moving average. And these bands, the upper pan is always 5% above this middle band, which is my moving average. And the red color band is 5% below. Now, what observation that we make, and I could look at this and they say, um, this is good. I can see, wow, I mean, it has been contained within that 5%, but really it doesn't give me any advantage of knowing, okay, it's good to have it within the 5 percentile, but I really don't see much of, uh, you know, like a reversals. I can see, all right, we're close to the, you know, we go above the you know, the moving average. So this is not a really big advantage to use this envelope. So 
why don't I look at a two and a half percent rather than five percent? So this is more of a trial. You do some research, but again, because we're using more of established um, uh, index like S and P five hundred, you can use a lower, in this case, two and a half percent. Then it kind of starts making sense. What happens, for instance, we uh, in this situation, you can see the moving average was flattening. So you can see there's a flat. And what has happened is we hit and we went outside the lower uh, envelope and we reversed. And what happened was we actually went to the top, we reversed, and then the 20 period moving average became a support. Now, what happened now, you can see the trend is changing. And all of a sudden, that we will see that what happened was we have a slope on our moving average, there's a strength, and we broke above upper band or the upper envelope side of the band, and it will continue. And here's the difference between with like with the Bollinger Bands. If you know, uh, if you're familiar with my, uh, you know, as far as the Bollinger Band rules, we say because it is the probability within the two standard deviation is that 95% of the time the prices will be contained within the bands of the Bollinger. In this situation, we say that usually it's very difficult to stay outside the Bollinger band uh, more than the most is like maybe five or like two or three. So based on that, you know that it's gonna reverse back inside the bands. So there will be some retracement, not that you have to short it, but you know it's the time maybe take the low profit. On the other hand, what happens with these, if there's a strength, you will continue, continue with the band so you can stay outside these band and continue going up. So basically this is a breakout and this was more of a support. So we will go a little more in the next chart, you shall see. But the point is that you have to do a trial, but for, you know, with the, more of a predictable index is in some ways that they're very liquid and um, very much followed, but two and a half percent perhaps is the best one to do. Now you can see we flattened here again, we went to the lower edge of the Bollinger Band. And again, we found the support immediately. We went to the, uh, usually you can see the next move, the 20 day moving average becomes a magnet. And we had a little stop here, almost like a double bottom here. And then we went and, uh, Basically, again, there was a lot, a lot of trend going on, and uh, but now we have an angle. So this is uh, one example of two. Let's look at something that basically it hasn't done much. It's been very much range bound. And we're talking about IWM, which is the ETF for the Russell 2000. Now, with IWM, is actually a little more volatile as far as the movement goes. So what happens is, um, uh, even NASDAQ, if you, you know, let's say QQQ, you want to open the, the, the width or the, you want to have a higher channel than let's say Spider or even Dar Jones. So what happens here, I use the 5% and guess what happened? You can see that 5% envelope has contained almost every single move in IWM. It has been flat. You can see that the, the moving average really hasn't had a lot of movement and basically has been not much of a slope. So you can see this strategy could have been pretty successful strategy, especially if you use it the midpoint, which is the moving average in this situation. So here, you know, we, from the top of the moving average, we go to the lower, I mean, the, the band, we go to the lower band, the version, go back to upper band lower band, moving average and becomes a magnet, come back to the lower band, go to the upper band, and now we are back to the lower band. Now, again, we have, again, that the, there's a little downward slope. We just broke under today, we broke under the, um, the 20 period moving average or 20 day in this situation. So this is more of, a, again, I mentioned something more of a flat or kind of a flat and uh, flattening, you know, um, band. So these are good for support and resistance. The other thing we can do, now I want to add something more to our, so we are familiar 
in this situation that we decided to use a two and a half percentile. And now we wanna see, oh, how about if you use the DMI, the directional movement index, and we see, well, how about the power of the uh, buyers? And we see the blue line just cross um, above the red line. And then the ADX, which is a trend indicator, has had an upper slope and is increasing. So it tells us that this, while we are outside the, the, the envelope or the band, we do have strength. You can see the, the moving average has a slope. So till we basically slow down and then it tells us that the, the trend is slowing down and we're getting flat. So that will be one of the ways. There's something else that I wanna to bring to your attention we use the momentum indicators, such as the stochastics, even the momentum indicator, we can use MACD. So one of the things we've used is MACDs and we can see MACD is really flattening. So it tells us really the movement is it's not a trend. So you wanna have the trend, you can see the histogram is opening. So it gives a confirmation. There is something called, it's called a percentage price oscillator and this uh, PPO is called, is very, very similar to MACD. So I will go uh, uh, explain that in, uh, in, um, in actually independent slides, what does that PPO stands for? So you could see again, basically they are very similar. The movement is, it's, uh, the histograms are pretty similar and uh, basically, um, well, let me just explain now that we are talking about it. it. It So as you know, MACD uses a 26 to 12, the difference of them and the averages of the difference is based on price. So what happens when you look at like a high price stocks, let's say Amazon or Google, because we're using the prices on the right hand side, you can see there's a big price differences. So we are moving from large, movements and the differences of the price. PPO does the same thing, except rather than using the absolute prices, it uses the percentages. And why is it attractive? While they're very similar, when you look at like a, uh, let's say you're comparing two stocks and let's say one is a very expensive chip stocks or the technology stocks. And even in the same sector, the same industry, the other one is, maybe in a, in a, let's say in 50s, the other one is like in three or $400 range. So it sometimes it is a little diversion, one of them because of the movement of the prices. With the percentage, it brings kind of a, a fairness to the picture. And it shows that, wait a minute, the movement under, let's say, the, as far as the percentage differences in one of the stocks was actually less than or, or more than, is it more oversold or is like that there's more weakness? So let's say this part is actually, is going down, there's a divergence compared to other stock. So basically with the securities, you can use that. So that's advantage of the PPO because it doesn't look at the price, it looks at the percentage of it. So it's just an added bonus. It does not apply here because it's a SPY in this situation is uh, pretty predictable in some ways. So back then, uh, uh, you know, PPO are pretty similar. But when you look at some volatile, again, as I mentioned, you want to compare two stocks to see, all right, you like the sectors, you like the industry, but you don't know which stock you want to uh, start investing. That will tell you as far as the strength, as far as the divergence, and uh, it, it's more um, advantageous to use the PPO. Now, the other thing we've talked about, now I, I, you can compare. So I go, we can see on the Bollinger Bands, I wanna compare them for the envelopes. You can see we've been contained with these the Bollinger Bands and it's like, it has the width has narrowed and the stochastic tells us we are still in a, in a embedded we are uptrend and uh, still, you know, we, there is no overbought because it can be stayed strong as long as, you know, this is above 80. So there's no reason to sell it yet. But when we go back to the, toward March, you can see, if you recall from the envelope, 
um, right here, you see what happened around April, actually end of March, April, we started going outside this envelope. But when we go back to, um, when you go and we, oops, so let me go back. When you look at the, um, the Bollinger Bands around the same time, we did go outside and then we came back inside and basically we just stayed. So uh, the good thing was stochastic was telling us we're embedded. So that was the strength that MACD has broken and the trend was up. But by looking at the combination of the Bollinger Bands and also with the envelopes, you can have the confirmation that this is strength and you will stay with this, um, with this position. Um, you can also use, that was from trade station that I use, but the stock charts also, you can combine different indicators. It's a three, again, uh, platform. So you can see that, first of all, we have the envelopes and it's based on the two and a half percentile and it's a 20 uh, day moving average, which is the blue in the middle. And again, it's very similar that what we saw. You can see the MACD and PPO, you can add it. It, it tells us again where we are. We are kind of really again flattening, and uh, basically tells us that there's no direction. You can see the ADX is going down, so the trend is dying. Look at the even convergence of the of positive DMI and negative DMI. So we are like really in a no man zone. So SPY is not <laughs> telling us that there's a lot of indecision right now. Um, so. Uh, I just want to have this slide just to give you um, uh, again a little more explanation about what is the PPO, what it stands for. So it is at the percentage price oscillator. It's a generally, it generates the same signal as MACD, except again it's the percentage version rather than the price version. And again, as I mentioned, you can use it when you have similar securities. You want to compare the strength of them and see which one is um, um, stronger than the other one or the weaker. All right, in conclusion, at the end, uh, I wanna put my seven criteria, the rules, or, you know, hopefully I'll summarize everything. So something to, uh, you know, hopefully it's helpful if you wanna um, use the, the, the moving average envelopes. And these are the seven things you have to remember. One of the things is you have to remember these moving average indicators that we use, they are all the envelopes, for instance, they were lagging indicators because they're looking back 20 days. So they're just telling us where we have been. It just gives us actually the picture. So basically it is something that you, you wanna, you know, again, um, uh, use some other uh, oscillators, momentum indicators such as stochastics, but just, just be reminded of that. The second thing is we wanna use the exponential moving average for the securities which are volatile, the movement is back and forth. So the SMA will be really lagging. So we wanna look at the exponential moving average. And also in the short-term trading, you wanna look at the exponential moving average. Also, you wanna use the short-term moving averages. As I mentioned, if the three, let's say exponential moving average or the eight day uh, or eight period moving averages, you wanna use exponential number one, but you also want to use a shorter period. You don't want to use like a 200 uh, period moving average. Um, if you're dealing with volatile stocks, if you're a day trader, for instance, short-term trader, and based on that, again, you want to use a higher bandwidth or the percentage or percentile for these volatile stocks and if you're a trader. Uh, the fourth thing, you want to make sure, you know, you followed your candlesticks. You want to have the confirmation. So, you are, again, we are bringing everything. These are all probabilities. So the more confirmations you have, uh, the better are the odds of, uh, you know, our success. So I would use the candlesticks, for instance, I mentioned when you're really overextended outside the bands, what will happen is basically it is, again, we're talking about rubber band. I will use the high of the low, for instance, and I want to see the low bar, but I want to see the reversal. We want to close above that low bar, and that's when we can use the candlesticks for our reversals. Now, as far as the indexes, such as, again, S&P 500, Dow Jones, and the general ETFs, which are not very volatile, you, you want to trade it as an investor. So what I mean by that is 
you can use uh, smaller percentages, maybe two and a half. Um, but for volatile stocks, for the ETFs, you want to be more of a trader. So at that, you know, you want to use really larger um, envelopes. In this situation, for instance, we tried the IWM. IWM obviously is a general ETF, but again, it, you have to really test these things. So you want to go with the idea of the more volatility, the higher the bandwidth. The less volatility, then the, the lower the bandwidth. And uh, that's the whole idea. Again, it's a trial and error. If you like the research on weekends, this will be a good one. And I think, it, again, it will increase your profitability. Um, so for instance, like a biotech stocks, you don't want to use like a 1% or 2.5% bandwidth, right? So we shall see in uh, get more examples, actually. Um, as I mentioned, we use it EMI and ADX for the trend uh, indications. We use the momentum oscillators. We want to see what is the strength of the trend. And if the things are changing, there's a diversion or if there's a, we're going to the overbought situation, that's for reversal, combine it with the, um, and with the candlesticks, uh, that's a good time to um, basically uh, take advantage of these indicators. Now, the last but not least is uh, uh, what you wanna do, um, try different percentages because each market is different and each season is different. So go back, if you just did SPY or IWM or any, uh, you wanna use the financials XLF, for instance, or XLE, try to, on the same uh, chart, try to use perhaps 2.5%, 5%, 7.5%, 10%. See how, um, as far as what is the probability? Is that giving you any type of a pattern that you can uh, take advantage for your trading or investing. So give you one example. So what I did, for instance, in this situation is the same idea. We have the SPY, the ETF for the spiders. So we use it 20 day moving average. So I went with two and a half percent. So we noticed, okay, two and a half percent at work. But what if I did 5%? So the 5% is the next level. It's a little thicker, you can see. And this is a thicker red. Well, we contained within that 5%. So that was not a big advantage to go 5%. I even went 7.5%. 7 7.5% 7 is really wide. So it doesn't really help me if I'm using spiders to go with the 7.5% bandwidth. And um, it, it's not an added benefit. So uh, this is more, again, predictable with the trend. Now, what if... I use something called NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA, on the other hand, guess what I've done? I did the same thing with the 2.5%. I did the 5%. I did the 7.5%. And still, you could see the strength. And what happened on 7.5%, and this is the overextension, even with the 7.5% bandwidth, what happened was we did go outside. And as I mentioned, we use, like, you could use candlesticks. And once there's a reversal, you can see it stays strong. So what we did, we used the third band, which is a 7.5%. We reverse it, and then we went all the way back to 20 period moving average. We come back, and we stopped at the 5%, came close to that 5%, reversed, and then we broke above the 7.5% the, the bandwidth. And look what happened here. And uh, right. Uh, end of May, and it was like the, the earnings, I believe, was coming, or it was something about this, um, I don't know if it was a split time or not, but you can see we broke above the 7.5% uh, envelope, and we continued, and so if you would have stayed with this, you would have been within that trend, so that shows strength, and we would have stayed till again, you can see what happened at the end and then we came inside and we went all the way to the, from the top of the seven and a half percent went all the way back to the lower seven and a half percent. Now it's a volatile stock. So what if I added a 10% and that's what you have to do trial. So I am using a 10 percentile. These are the uh, uh, purple lines, the thick really lines. And you can see we still had the strength and we did go outside 
and uh, basically we stayed and that was a lot of strength we stayed above the seven and a half percent as we spoke so we went from the top of the 10 percent all the way to the bottom of the 10 percent so pick and choose your um again the the, the channel width um basically this was actually simple i should have used actually even exponential moving average, so that might have been even more updated. But it just want to show you the idea that you can sit back and do some of your back testing yourself. Now, another thing you can see on NVIDIA, I looked at, and now here we do the exact same thing. We go back to, let's say it was June when we broke out. And you can see the Bollinger Bands, they just went from the narrow bands, they just expanded. So we've stayed kind of within that Bollinger Band and we just continued it's our stochastic said it's okay to stay the macd said it's okay to stay um uh, but the bollinger band really it was just telling us that you know we are expanding so it's the strength and then we slowed down here so it didn't give us any indication what's going on it was like oh but um uh, when we looked at the envelope we could see the strength would have allowed us to stay because we stayed outside that envelope we kept going so um and again the stochastics are telling us and uh, basically again combination of things so sometimes keltner channels or bollinger bands do not give me give us all the and uh, you know all the probability that we need for a successful trade so it's good to have those bands um with that in mind i very much appreciate your attention i hope this was useful and uh, informative and uh, that in mind, I uh, thank you very much. I open for the Q and A.